Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. This is the A Plus Tutor. Today, we're going over parallel lines and transversals. Two parallel lines and a transversal looks like this. The two lines, L and M, will never touch. They are parallel to each other. And the transversal intersects both lines. There are relationships between the angles on these lines. Using these relationships, we can identify what angles are congruent to each other and if we can find the value of that angle using the relationship. Let's start with corresponding angles. Angles that are on the same side of the transversal and on the same side of the parallel lines are corresponding angles. Angle 2 and angle 6 are both on top of the parallel line and to the left of the transversal, so they are corresponding and they're congruent. Another example of corresponding angles would be angle 4 and angle 8. Angle 3 and angle 5 are called alternate interior angles. These angles are on the interior of our parallel lines and they alternate our transversal. Therefore, we call them alternate interior angles and alternate interior angles are congruent. Angle 1 and angle 7 are alternate exterior angles. These angles are on the exterior or on the outside of our parallel lines and they are on opposite sides of our transversal. So therefore, they are called alternate exterior angles and alternate exterior angles are also congruent. Lastly, angle 4 and angle 5 are consecutive interior angles. These angles are on the same side of our transversal and are on the inside of our parallel lines. So they're consecutive interior angles. Consecutive interior angles add up to give us 180 degrees. So the measure of angle 4 plus the measure of angle 5 equals 180. Let's find the value of another angle given a condition. So we have two parallel lines and a transversal. First, we're told the measure of angle 3 equals 100 degrees. If the measure of angle 3 is 100 degrees, then what is the measure of angle 5? Well, angle 3 and angle 5 are alternate interior angles. So the measure of angle 3 equals the measure of angle 5, which is 100 degrees. If the measure of angle 3 is equal to 175 degrees, then what is the measure of angle 6? Well, angle 3 and angle 6 would be consecutive interior angles. This means the measure of angle 3 plus the measure of angle 6 is equal to 180 degrees. So angle 6 is going to be equal to 180 minus 175, and the measure of angle 6 would equal 5 degrees. If the measure of angle 8 is equal to 20 degrees, then what is the measure of angle 3? In order to find the measure of angle 3, we need to take two steps. First, we can see that angle 8 and angle 2 are alternate exterior angles, which means angle 8 and angle 2 are congruent to each other. So if angle 8 equals 20 degrees, then angle 2 equals 20 degrees. Angle 2 and angle 3 are supplementary angles. So supplementary angles add up to give us 180. Angle 2 plus angle 3 equals 180 degrees, and angle 2 would equal 160. When solving these problems, there may be more than one way to solve them, but I'm going to display one potential way that you could solve them. If you get to the same answer that I do using a different method, that's totally fine as long as you're using the appropriate rules. But keep in mind there are multiple ways to solve these problems. If the measure of angle 8 equals 40 degrees, then what's the measure of angle 4? 
angle 8 and angle 4 are corresponding angles, and corresponding angles are congruent. So if the measure of angle 8 equals 40 degrees, then the measure of angle 4 is also 40 degrees. If the measure of angle 5 is equal to 140 degrees, then what is the measure of angle 2? This one we'll have to find in two steps. First, angle 5 and angle 6 are supplementary angles, which means they add to give us 180 degrees. So we can find the measure of angle 6 by subtracting the measure of angle 5 from 180. Angle 6 is equal to 40 degrees. Angle 6 and angle 2 are corresponding angles, and corresponding angles are congruent. So, if the measure of angle 6 is 40 degrees, then the measure of angle 2 is equal to 40 degrees. Lastly, if the measure of angle 4 is 55 degrees, then what is the measure of angle 7? Again, we'll have to do this in multiple steps. First, angle 4 and angle 6 are alternate interior angles, and alternate interior angles are congruent. So if the measure of angle 4 is 55 degrees, then the measure of angle 6 is also 55 degrees. Angle 6 and angle 7 are supplementary angles, so angle 6 plus angle 7 will equal 180, and angle 7 will equal 180 minus angle 6. Therefore, the measure of angle 7 is equal to 125 degrees. So now, given a series of parallel lines or a shape, let's find the missing values. First, we have a triangle with two parallel lines. So one parallel line is the base, and then one is in about the middle of this triangle. We have three different angles we need to find the values of x and y. First, let's look at the two angles that have x in them, 3x plus 5 and 6x minus 14. These angles are supplementary angles. Therefore, they'll add to give us 180 degrees. So if we add these two angles together, this should equal 180 degrees and we can solve for x. So 3x plus 5 plus 6x minus 14 equals 180 degrees. Let's combine our like terms. So 3x plus 6x plus 5 minus 14 equals 180 degrees. 9x minus 9 equals 180. Add 9 to both sides. 9x equals 189. Divide both sides by 9 and we get x equals 21. Now we found the value for x. Looking at our two angles on the inside of our parallel lines, 6x minus 14 and y plus 8, these angles are consecutive interior angles. We have two parallel lines cut by a transversal, and they're on the same side of our transversal and on the inside of our parallel lines. Therefore, these are consecutive interior angles, and they will add to give us 180. So 6x minus 14 plus y plus 8 equals 180. We just found that x is equal to 21, so we'll, we will replace x with 21 and get 6 times 21 minus 14 plus y plus 8 equals 180. 126 minus 14 plus 8 plus y equals 180. Combining all of our numbers gives us 120 plus y equals 180. Subtract 120 from both sides, and y equals 60. So we found our values for x and y. Next, we have two sets of parallel lines. First, we can see that x and 72 are consecutive interior angles. They're on the same side as the transversal, and they're on the inside of the parallel lines. So when we add these two together, we'll get 180. This means x plus 72 equals 180, and x equals 108. Next, 
let's use this value for x to find z. We can see that 3z plus 18 and x are corresponding angles because they're both on the same side of the transversal and on the same side of the parallel lines. This makes them corresponding angles and corresponding angles are congruent. So 3z plus 18 equals x or 3z plus 18 equals 108, 3z equals 90, and z equals 30. Lastly, notice that 72 and 3y are supplementary angles, and supplementary angles add up to give us 180. So 72 plus 3y equals 180, 3y equals 108, and y equals 36. Next, we have a parallelogram, and we need to, again, solve for x and y. Notice that 8x plus 40 and 6x and 7y and 3y minus 10 are both pairs of consecutive interior angles. So this means that the sum of these angles is equal to 180 degrees. 6x plus 8x plus 40 equals 180. Combining like terms means 14x plus 40 equals 180. 14x equals 140, and x equals 10. Let's do the same thing with 7y and 3y minus 10. 7y plus 3y minus 10 equals 180. Combine like terms, and 10y minus 10 equals 180. Add 10 to both sides. 10y equals 190, and y equals 19. Last example. We have two parallel lines, one horizontal line, and one line at an angle. So we see a little bit of a triangle and then some other lines here. First, x and our right angle are both on the same side of the parallel lines and on the same side of the transversal. Therefore, they're corresponding angles and they're congruent. This means that x is equal to 90. If we look at our two outside parallel lines and that transversal, y minus 18 and y plus 12 are consecutive interior angles. This means when we add these together, we'll get 180. So y minus 18 plus y plus 12 is equal to 180. Combine like terms, 2y minus 6 is equal to 180. Add 6 to both sides. 2y equals 186, divide both sides by 2, and y equals 93. y minus 18 and z are complementary angles. Since x equals 90, the entire angle on the other side of the x is also 90 degrees. Therefore, y minus 18 and z must be complementary and must add up to 90 degrees. So y minus 18 plus z equals 90. y is equal to 93, so let's replace that. 93 minus 18 plus z equals 90. 75 plus z equals 90. Subtract 75 from both sides, and z equals 15. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and comment down below what other topics you'd like for me to review. I upload new videos every Tuesday and every Thursday at 1 p.m. You can also feel free to leave me comments on my Instagram or on my Facebook page at the A Plus Tutor. I'll have those links below as well. See you next time.